Mr. President, welcome to Political Science 311, Interest Groups and the Political Process. I think that this university joined with businesses in the local community and other institutions can be in the forefront of high tech growth. To use this institution as a forum from which to tell you in serious vein my views of foreign policy. First, let me say how delighted I am to be back at this campus again. I visited here in 1992, and I'm glad to be here again. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here with one of my heroes and mentors, Congressman John Dingell, and I'm glad to be in Dearborn. From the first 14 to over 40,000 strong, we are leading the way. advancing the future of manufacturing through research in the Institute for Advanced Vehicle Systems. Furthering the understanding of corporate, entrepreneurial, and institutional innovation through iLabs. by improving pre-K through 12 education at the Early Childhood Education Center and through our partnerships with local schools. By tackling environmental challenges at our Environmental Interpretive Center and through community coalitions like the Rouge Gateway Partnership. by developing effective regional leadership, both in the classroom and through real-world initiatives designed to foster civic engagement. And by addressing issues of racial and ethnic division through campus dialogue and community collaboration. Working smarter, doing more, challenging ourselves, pushing forward. From a school focused on engineering and business to a top-ranked university developing the region's leaders and best, a place shaping the ideas that change our world. In 1959, we were breaking ground on a new university, and we've been groundbreaking ever since. We are teachers, philanthropists, community leaders, entrepreneurs, engineers, builders, difference makers, Metro Detroit's leaders and best. We are University of Michigan Dearborn, 50 years making an impact, and we've just gotten started. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shirley Stancato, President and CEO New Detroit. Thank you. Good evening. I think we can do better than that. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I am so privileged to welcome you tonight to U of M Dearborn's 50th anniversary celebration, and I think I'm the first to be able to officially say congratulations. Please join me in a round of applause for this university. Now, my first order of business this evening is to introduce Jim Vella. Jim is president of Ford Motor Company's philanthropic organization, Ford Motor Company Fund and Community Services. And he's formerly the company's chief of staff and vice president of public affairs. Jim's career at Ford began in 1988 as a producer for Ford Communications Network, coordinating the internal television programs. I'm also very proud to say that he's a member of the executive committee of New Detroit Incorporated. Please join me in welcoming Jim Bella. Jim. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, it's great to be here with all of you. This is a really special meeting for me personally to be able to stand up in front of that big M there with the Dearborn and also to be at uh, the Henry Ford Estate. 
Um, so uh, it's really great to be here. Shirley, thank you. For those. Shirley's one of my bosses. She said I worked at, she, on the executive committee. Dan's one of my bosses too, Dan Little, the chancellor. So I feel a little pressure here right now to do well. <clears throat> um, certainly celebrating a 50th anniversary is really a very special milestone and a cause for celebration. <clears throat> and in these tough times, sometimes we don't find enough time to celebrate the good things and the great things that we have in our community. And certainly if you got a chance to watch that video, um, it really says a lot about the importance and the role that this university has played uh, both not only in, here in Michigan, but I think on the national scene, much more than I could ever say. I'm really honored to be part of this 50 years after the partnership between Ford and the university all started. As president of Ford Motor Company Fund and Community Services, I'm carrying on a tradition that really began with the founding of the university. At the Ford Motor Company Fund, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary. We were started by the company back in 1949. And uh, one of the first major acts of the fund was donating the money to establish this university. With a grant of $6.5 million that was announced in late 1956, and a few years later, in the fall of 1959, classes began at what was then called the Dearborn Center of U of M. I'm told there were 34 students that enrolled that first year. Today, there are more than 8,600. I wish our market share had gone up that much. And I was talking to Stan Henderson before uh, this started, and Stan was telling me that the enrollment is continuing to grow. So I think that's really a tribute to everyone here. The relationship between the company and the university has not only continued through the years, it's really thrived, even in difficult times, such as what we're experiencing today. The partnership, is grown, it's strong, and I'm glad to say that it's thriving. The university and the company continue to find new and innovative ways to work together. Just this past July, <clears throat> excuse me, Ford Fund partnered with the Business College here at U of M Dearborn and the campus chapter of Students in Free Enterprise to sponsor the Entrepreneurship Academy, or E-Academy as it's called. This innovative program brings teams of high school students from around the region to campus for a two-week learning experience. As a part of that eAcademy experience, students learn from university, faculty, students, and corporate mentors how to create a business plan. The two weeks culminate in an intensive business plan competition where the high school teams present their plans to a panel of private sector judges. And all of the participants, I'm glad to say, receive a Blue Oval Ford Scholarship from the Ford Fund. We've also committed to find ways to work together for the betterment of this community. I'm proud to say that U of M Dearborn is the only university in this country to receive two grants from the Ford Community, Ford College Community Challenge, or Ford C3, as we call it, a prestigious national competition that challenges universities to create innovative student-led projects around the theme of building sustainable communities. You know, not a lot of people remember this, but one of the reasons the company uh, started this university to begin with was because and helped to partner in starting this university was because the Fords knew that they needed a sustainable business and we were a little short at the time on finance folks and engineers and so we really believed in 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 kind of home that homegrown uh, aspect of, of building a sustainable business in a community so that was one of the reasons that we, we got involved as much as we have here but in 2008, the first year of the competition, U of M Dearborn created an online outpost on Second Life called the Campus of Hope, which partnered with the Food Bank Council of Michigan to create tools that will help food banks across the state solve problems and become more efficient in their operations. And at the same time, we were teaching college students about the issue of hunger and providing them with opportunities to get involved. In 2009, just this year, U of M Dearborn produced another winning Ford C3 proposal, this time working with the Capuchin Soup Kitchen of Detroit to provide assistance with business operations, growth strategy, and employee uh, education. This project in particular focuses on helping the Soup Kitchen develop and evaluate the growth of its On the Rise Bakery, an initiative that anchors a successful rehab program for formerly homeless or incarcerated men. 
You might also be interested to know that through the years, Ford Motor Company Fund has invested more than $77 million in the University of Michigan, which includes both the Ann Arbor and Dearborn campuses, and just 20, and $25 million in the last 10 years alone. In fact, if you add up all the dollars that Ford has invested in U of M over the years, Ford is the single largest overall corporate donor in U of M history. And we... <clears throat> Hopefully we can come up in another 50 years and continue that track record. I, I say the word invested because most people think that as a philanthropic organization, we just go around giving away money. But that really couldn't be further from the truth. We invest in people, organizations, and ideas that help make the world a better place. And the University of Michigan Dearborn has certainly done that. Our top prior priority at Ford it Fund is education and has been since the fund was formed more than a half a century ago. Why is that? For a couple of reasons. One is it certainly provides hope. Hope for students for a better day. Hope for parents who send their students here that they will have a better life maybe than they had. And hope for the future that we will build a better world. From a practical viewpoint, the investment brings us talent. We recruit more graduates from U of M campuses than from any other school in the country. And I'm very proud to say that more of our students come from this, or just as many students at least, come from this campus as come from Ann Arbor. And for those that don't choose to come to work for, at Ford for some unknown reason, <clears throat> we at least hope that they will buy Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury products. <laughs> These same graduates, though, seriously, help make up our communities and provide taxes and support for our local businesses. They volunteer their time and they raise families that help our society to grow. So we believe that's a very good investment. In fact, you can take Ford's commitment to being a socially responsible company all the way back to our founder, Henry Ford. One of his most notable quotes came when he said, a business that makes nothing but money is a poor business. It was true then, and it holds true today. He may have even said that maybe in this room. Who knows? So I'd like to take just a minute to talk a little bit about some of the work the fund is doing. Last year, we invested more than $17 million in educated-related programs. We're working on everything from partnerships with the Smithsonian Museums in Washington to develop innovative traveling exhibits like the Freedom Sisters exhibit, which profiles 20 African-American women who made significant contributions to the civil rights movement. At the high school level, we're working with community partners to help produce our nation's next generation of innovators through an innovative partnership called Ford Pass, or Ford Partnership for Advanced Studies. By the way, that, innovative, that initiative is reaching more than 40,000 students now in 27 states. And I'd be remiss if I didn't note that U of M Dearborn is one of the strongest partners that we have in implementing this program. I do not think we would have the reach and the depth that we have without the help of the folks here at U of M. So I hope you can see from some of these examples that the partnership is one that is alive, ongoing, and doing very well. But being a good corporate citizen and responsible business is more than just about providing money. It's about being part of the community and volunteering our time here on campus. In uh, 2005, Bill Ford announced the formation of the Ford Volunteer Corps, which is based on the model of the Peace Corps. It's a, a well-organized unit made up of thousands of Ford employees and retirees. Last year, we had more than 18,000 employees volunteer over 100,000 hours of their time. Just last week, we had a program we call the Global Week of Caring. We had 10,300 employees volunteer in 22 countries to work on volunteer organizations. It's a source of great satisfaction for the people who give of their time. I've been the president of Ford Motor Company Fund for more than two years, and during that time, we've changed the way we operate the business for a number of reasons. The obvious one is the state of the economy and the impact on Ford. We are now focusing on grassroots or community efforts. We're now targeting our support more regionally than at the national level because we believe we can have a greater impact directly in communities. And, direct, and, and fundamentally, we've shifted our approach to one where we view ourselves as partners with educational institutions like this one. 
and community organizations and work more closely with them to meet their needs. Quite frankly, it makes good business sense. Customer research shows that cu customers want companies to be responsible, employees feel better about their company when they know what it, that it's doing the right thing, and even investors are more likely to put their money into a company they believe is helping to make the world a better place. Good companies today need to be successful on Wall Street, but they also must be successful on Main Street, and that requires commitment. Bill Ford often reminds me that a good company delivers excellent products and services, but a great company delivers excellent products and services and at the same time strives to make the world a better place. And working with key partners such as the ones we have here at U of M Dearborn, we're helping to deliver on that commitment. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. I believe these are fitting words to describe what we've accomplished together. I think that everyone here can take great pride in being part of the U of M Dearborn community, and I know that I do, and basking in the glow of 50 years of outstanding service to Southeast Michigan. But while we're looking back, I think we also, <clears throat> at the same time, need to look forward to the next 50 years. I wanna thank each and every one of the faculty members who are here today because for their hard work, dedication, and effort, they are the glue that holds the university together. They're the heart that beats in every classroom. They're the voice that resonates in the ears and the minds of each and every one of the students who have passed through here. While they're on campus, and even when they leave with that diploma in hand, you have a greater responsibility than ever in preparing the students in this campus for the challenges they will face in the business world. We are, un we are in unprecedented times in my view. For those of you from this community, who would have ever thought growing up that two manufacturing giants like General Motors and Chrysler would be bankrupt and end up being owned by their government and their unions? I think if you had said that a few years ago, you probably might have been tossed out of this place or somewhere else. The words free enterprise, do they still ring true as they have in past generations? Who would have thought that we'd be in a world driven by instant communications, fa Facebook posts, blogs, Twitters, and an internet, I still don't know what Twitter is, so someone will explain that to me. And an internet that brings the world to your doorstep in any language you choose and without outside interv intervention by media giants or governments. Just on the communication side, most of the things I just mentioned weren't here 50 years ago when this university started. So we're counting on you, we're counting on everyone at this university to continue to, be, uh, to continue to prepare students to be the next generation of leaders despite these challenges in much the same spirit you have done in the last 50 years. <clears throat> For simple reasons, our businesses need you, our state needs you, and our students need you to be better than you have ever been in this regard. In many ways, the future is in your very capable hands. I'd like to close by thanking you once again for allowing me to be part of this program this evening and a very small part of this university. As some of you may know, Dan Little was kind enough to allow me to spend a year here on a loaned executive program for Ford when I stepped down as chief of staff. Uh, nobody else wanted me, but Dan took me. Um, <clears throat> and they haven't been able to keep me away ever since. My experience here has really been inspiring, mainly due to all of you, but also to the stu because of the students. The students who I have met who work so hard and dream so high about what could be, not about what is. They remind me of what is important in life and that there is always hope for a better day. On behalf of the men and women of Ford, congratulations to U of M Dearborn, to Dan Little, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, the students, everyone who's played a role in the success of this university, and to the many corporate and community partners who make up the university family. Good luck for the next 50 years. You know, when I listen to Jim say that we need to find cause to celebrate in this region, and I listen to your comments, I thought that we should all celebrate Ford Motor Company. You clearly are part of the fabric of this community, and your generosity is really unparalleled, so we celebrate Ford Motor Company.
And now it's my privilege to introduce Chancellor Little. I, I was thinking about the first time I met Dan and when I was doing some research for when he first started here at U of M Dearborn, I realized it was July 2000 and I started at New Detroit in January 2000. When I first met him, there was a bond that really ha was created then and it's much stronger now. Dan has been Chancellor here since July 2000, as I said. And as leader of U of M Dearborn, he's reached out regularly to partner with leaders in metropolitan Detroit. He believes that the university should provide a service that meets the needs of this metropolitan community. He's so very passionate about that. When Dan describes U of M Dearborn, he describes it as a part of the community, not separate from the community. And he believes so very much in that. And U of M Dearborn is so very fortunate to have such a transformational leader as Dan to head this organization at this time. Chancellor Little. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you so much for those warm words. And Jim, what a, what a great description and what great words you offered to, uh, to this audience. Bernadette and I would like to thank all of you for being here this evening and to offer our very, very warmest welcome on this important ceremony for the University of Michigan Dearborn. We'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be a part of this evening as we celebrate UM Dearborn's 50 years of academic excellence and service to this region. There are some special people I'd like to, I'd like to single out before I turn to my remarks. Joining us here this evening are a number of special guests who have played a significant role in the history of this university. I'd like to begin by recognizing two members of our Board of Regents. Uh, Andrew Richner, who is Chair of the Board of Regents. And Regent Libby Maynard is, has joined us as well this evening. And these are two regents who are especially supportive of the Dearborn campus, and I thank both of them for being a part of this evening's celebration. Former UM Dearborn Chancellor Pat Goodall has been able to join us as well. Pat. And Pat pl played a key role in a formative period of the formation of this campus, and we're all grateful to the great work that Pat did here on the campus. Also joining us here this evening is one of the newest members of our community and yet a person deeply committed already to the UM Dearborn Way, and that's Provost Kate Davey. Kate. We are simply thrilled to have brought Kate to the campus. She's been here only for about two, three months, and yet she already has had a tremendous impact on the campus, and I look forward to many years of working together. I would also like to recognize Joe LaRussa, the chair of the Alumni Society Board of Governors. Joe. The alumni of the campus have been tremendously supportive, and Joe, your leadership is really very much appreciated. Additionally, we have a large number of elected officials, community leaders, and members of the Citizens Advisory Committee here this evening. Would the elected officials and Citizens Advisory Committee members please stand for our recognition? And we are joined by several executive officers of the University of Michigan, my colleagues in, in, in helping to kind of figure out a good course for the whole University of Michigan. And so I would like to extend welcome to Vice President and Secretary Sally Churchill. Also to Vice President Royster Harper. To Vice President Sue Ellen Skarnecchia. to Provost Terry Sullivan, and to UM Flint Chancellor Ruth Person. And I have to say, these are officers, I would say all of the executive officers are just as co committed as we are here on the campus to the success of the Dearborn campus. And so I express my own appreciation to all of the executive officers. I would also like to express my appreciation and my friendship to Gail Mee, president of Henry Ford Community College, our neighbor to the north and a long-term partner to this campus. But uh, Gail has shown herself to be a leader who really cares about the partnership and that's something very, very important to us. Gail is here somewhere. Good. Thank you. So thanks to all of these leaders and these friends of the campus for being here. But I must say, in the 
half hour we had or so before the beginning of the ceremony to realize the depth of friendship and the depth of caring and commitment from so many people in this room. It really is a very moving experience for me and I think it is for all of us. I would especially like to thank the guest speakers, beginning with Shirley Stancato, who is acting as our MC this evening, as we talked about who could, who could best serve as MC for this event and it, who would understand the campus and also understand its relation, all of us thought of Shirley Stancato. And so Shirley, thank you very much for taking on that responsibility. I certainly look forward to your comments about the partnerships which UM Dearborn can and should forge with community organizations throughout the region. Jim Vella, we are just so pleased to have you with us this evening. Jim is a valued and trusted friend of the University of Michigan Dearborn, as he is of the University of Michigan as a whole. He is a well-known supporter of education in his role as president of the Ford Motor Company Fund, but he is also an important and visible force here on the campus. And so, Jim, thank you for your involvement. Marty Hershock, who will be speaking to you briefly, both as an alumnus, but also as a leading member of this faculty. Marty, thank you for your participation. Marty is one of those special UM Dearborn graduates who continues to give back to the university in so many different ways. Finally, you'll be hearing from Saba Khan, one of our immensely talented students. Saba is a junior in the College of Business and is Vice President of the Muslim Student Association. Saba, thank you for joining us, and we all look forward to your comments. President Mary Sue Coleman is with us in spirit, and she regrets deeply not being able to be with us here this evening in person. She is in Washington, D.C. at a national energy policy conference, a pre-existing commitment which she simply could not miss, but she understands how important this campus is, and in a couple of minutes, I will be introducing a video statement from Mary Sue Coleman. President Coleman has articulated a three-campus vision, which is clearly expressive of the, the, the unity in diversity of the three campuses of the university, and that's a vision that we all share here on this campus as well. Even though President Coleman could not be with us here in person, she did want to send her greetings, and so I'd like to ask that we roll the video. Congratulations to the University of Michigan Dearborn community on reaching the important milestone of 50 years in the life of our university. I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I want to be the first to join you in the celebration of 50 years of achievement at UM Dearborn, both in academic excellence and metropolitan impact. From innovation and co-op programs in the early 1960s to my earth, an environmental sustainability social network site created this year by UM Dearborn and Detroit Public Television, the students, faculty, and staff of the Dearborn campus have a consistent and strong record of strengthening all facets of southeastern Michigan. The University of Michigan is equally proud of the more than 40,000 alumni from the Dearborn campus and the impact they are having on their communities, companies, and families. The Dearborn campus is an essential and valued asset of the University of Michigan, and all of us throughout the university celebrate this 50th anniversary today. You have my best wishes for a wonderful evening of celebration. So those are greetings from President Coleman, and uh, I know the sincerity with which he expresses them. I myself really have just one message to share with you today. It is that I hope that all of you will share with me the personal feelings which I have on this occasion. Deep pride in the accomplishments of this campus, deep, deep recognition of what the faculty and staff and students and friends of this campus have created. Secondly, a sense of genuine privilege. I certainly feel tremendous privilege to have been a part of this university for the past nine years, and I myself look forward to a long association going out into the future. But third, I have a deep-seated excitement and optimism about the future of the campus. The decision to create this university back in the 1950s was not as simple or inevitable as it might seem today. It took courage on the part of UM President Harlan Hatcher to welcome the overtures from Ford Motor Company and to partner with them in establishing this campus. Adding a satellite campus in Dearborn to the already powerful and nationally recognized University of Michigan, perhaps that decision had more risk than potential opportunity at the time. 
It was a bold decision. But the University of Michigan is known for bold decisions. And as we look back today, it was a decision that was made with great foresight. But it was no less of a risk 10 years later in 1969 when the decision was made to evolve into a four-year university. The faculty and administration of the Dearborn campus clearly had a vision, but they also had the discrimination, the determination, and the guts to carry it through. And they found welcome support from the Board of Regents and from the presidents of the University of Michigan. The ensuing decades demonstrated that same pioneering spirit time and time again. Through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we can look back with great pride at the many innovative programs and the many sacrifices which this community undertook in order to achieve success. When I arrived in 2000, I was simply thrilled with what greeted me here. Wonderful, hardworking, bright, and curious students, and I might say students who are really distinctive on this campus. As you get to know them, you know that they are really an unusual and talented group of people. Second, strong, highly developed academic programs in every academic unit on the campus, thanks to a first-rate faculty and to forward-thinking administrators. Third, I found a terrific honors program that stretches across all of the units, drawing students from across the university. We also had spectacular technology, which has only gotten better over the past nine years for teaching, learning, and creating. We had programs like the Child Development Center and the Pluralism Project that combined student learning with real community benefit. And we had partnerships with business, industry, government, and nonprofit organizations, which together brought us problems to solve, resources to invest, and real world knowledge to tap into. It was a remarkably powerful combination. Which brings me to reflecting about the last 10 years, a decade marked by radical changes in the environment around us. We have experienced changes in the business world, including an unprecedented restructuring of the auto industry, which Jim referred to. We've seen changes in technology, the explosion of the internet, and Jim, I'm willing to talk to you about Twitter. <laughs> and we've seen changes in the state of Michigan which our elected officials in the audience will certainly understand as deeply as any of us, changes in the state of Michigan resulting from unprecedented fiscal and economic challenges. I was particularly proud of how our campus pulled itself together to be an island of peace, as one Muslim student described it shortly after the September 11th tragedy. This campus showed itself to be a welcoming and, and supportive environment for all of our students, including especially our Muslim students. We have been through many difficult times that have demanded the very best of the human capabilities of this community, and I am proud to say that this intellectual and academic community has done such wonderful work together over these 50 years. A particularly important piece of prog progress in the past decade that we have achieved is a much more robust sense of who we are and where we're going. We have defined ourselves in the past five, six, and seven years as a metropolitan university, embodying the academic excellence and aspiration of the University of Michigan. We have defined our strategic vision in four key goals. To deepen the academic excellence of the campus, to enhance student engagement in every way, to grow enrollment in the size of the campus, and to achieve deep metropolitan impact. So what is metropolitan impact? It's not just a slogan. We have emphasized impact in areas of alignment between the challenges of metropolitan Detroit and the areas of great strength here on this campus. We've identified five areas for special attention. First, advancing the future of manufacturing in a global environment, helping the innovative spirit of this region really reach its potential. Second, improving preschool and K through 12 education. Third, addressing the racial and ethnic divides which continue to exist in this region. Fourth, solving urban environmental challenges and addressing the issues of air, water, soil, quality, which any urban industrial region faces. And finally, to help to, to develop effective regional leadership and the young people moving into positions of leadership in towns and city, city councils and school boards. At the same time, 
Our greatest metropolitan impact, I think all of us would recognize, is in the form of educating and sending forth into our communities the hugely talented and well-prepared students, both undergraduate and graduate, who will engage in the hard work of remaking southeastern Michigan. Our students become leaders, innovators, and agents of change in our communities. And if you don't believe me, just go out and talk to people. In almost any room of creative people, you'll find a small number of UM Dearborn people who are helping to lead the way. I am optimistic about the future of the campus for a number of reasons. First, we are taking actions right now which support our goals and will position us to be on the forefront in the future. We are launching three new doctoral programs this fall, which help to extend that mission, two in engineering, one in the School of Education. We've evolved the former School of Management into the new College of Business. And this is not just a name change, but it is rather a reassessment of the entire curriculum to allow us to better serve the needs of our students and our business partners. We are engaging our alumni in new ways, and I thank and salute all of the alums who are in the, in the room today and, and in the surrounding villages to whom we are broadcasting in the form of the tent city outside. <laughs> and we are working on ways to re-engage young people, the 160,000 young people of our three counties who have some college but have not completed. We're working in partnership with community colleges and other four-year universities to help bring those people back to university and to allow them to complete their degrees. And these steps are only a start. We have new initiatives on the horizon, and I'd like to mention two of them tonight. First, we have always provided on this campus experiential learning opportunities for our students through co-ops and internships. And we are committed to continuing that educational idea as we go forward. Right now, we have a major task force at work, which is reviewing our current co-op and internship practices looking at best practices around the country and developing a strategy for an even more robust approach to experiential learning, including service learning, which will benefit our students and our business and community and nonprofit partners. And we'll have more to say about this as the year proceeds. Second, it is my, my conviction and the conviction of many here on the campus that this campus is very well positioned to serve as a center for social research and data collection about the region in a way which can be tremendously powerful as we try to design our course forward. A group of faculty on the campus, metropolitan researchers, I call them, are developing innovative ideas about how to form a center for metropolitan research on this campus, which can serve as a focus and repository for useful social science research about many of the issues that our region faces. In my more grandiose version, I like to think of it as being analogous to the Institute for Social Research, but focused on metropolitan research. We'll have more to say about this project as well in the coming weeks and months. The fact is, we have had a long and rich history with many accomplishments over the years. We have so much to be proud of. We have hosted government leaders, including several US presidents and vice presidents, as you saw in the video. I myself remember standing on a stage with Al Gore in uh, 2000 and uh, finding that this apparently wooden man was very, very good with a crowd. We have never shied away from controversy on this campus, hosting such unique visitors as former General William Westmoreland, Bobby Seale, Michael Moore, and Rosa Parks. And this campus has continued to be a place where equality, respect, pluralism, and social justice are encouraged, practiced, and valued. So to conclude, there is so much to be proud of in our first 50 years, and all of you have played an important role in this history. I hope that you will take a few minutes when you have a moment to view the 50th anniversary website and the collection of stories and uh, photographs and other memorabilia which have been provided from friends of the campus, alums, and uh, uh, former faculty and staff of the campus. But I would also like to challenge all of you, everyone connected with the campus, faculty, staff, alumni, students, to challenge all to be bold in your thinking and to be bold in your actions about the roles that the University of Michigan Dearborn can play. We are an ambitious group and we can accomplish a lot. So follow in the footsteps of our predecessors here at UM Dearborn, create change that has a positive force on our university and on our community. 
We have the opportunity now to do things that will help us to continue to grow and to have even greater impact for our students and for the communities that we serve in Southeast Michigan. So I see bright days ahead. We have a well-qualified, enormously talented faculty and staff, an energetic and capable alumni group, an ambitious and motivated student body. Working together, side by side, we can continue to build a legacy of excellence and to make our next 50 years even more outstanding than our first half century. So I thank all of you for coming and being a part of this evening's activities. And on behalf of the University of Michigan, I thank you for being part of our university community. And now it is my pleasure to invite Shirley back to the stage. Thank you, Dan. Isn't he great? Well, when Dan asked me to moderate tonight's program, it didn't take long for me to say yes, because those of you who've been asked to do something by Dan know it's really hard to turn him down. But you know nothing's free, right, Dan? OK. <laughs> I want to congratulate uh, Chancellor Little on this milestone in the university's history. And I'd like to share a little bit with you about our partnership with the University of Michigan, Dearborn's role in this community. For those of you who don't know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm CEO of New Detroit. New Detroit is this region's only organization that's focused solely on race and race relations. Most of you may know that we were founded in 1967 following the civil disturbances that rocked our community. We are a coalition of leaders from throughout the region representing business, labor, community and civil rights organizations, religious and educational institutions. We form partnerships with these individuals and organizations in order to accomplish our work of addressing race relations issues in this region. The University of Michigan Dearborn has long been one of our partners. Chancellor Little has been a member of our board since October 2001. As I mentioned earlier, when I first met him, something clicked and I immediately asked him to be a part of New Detroit's board. And he chairs one of our committees. And I'm also proud to be a member of the University of Michigan Dearborn Citizens Advisory Committee. Very early on, Chancellor Little and U of M Dearborn accepted New Detroit's premise that race relations is a central issue facing our region. I quote from one of the university's guiding principles. We embrace diversity and encourage dialogue. Our value lies in our ability to provide a welcoming environment for discussing challenging issues. Here are some of the examples of what the university has done that are in keeping with New Detroit's shared focus on education and multiculturalism. In New Detroit, we say relationships first, issues second. And by that, we mean that it is important to get to know people. And when you do that, then you can deal with the issues that are in front of you in a different way, and we feel in a much better way. And so that's one of the things that we, we focus on at New Detroit, as well as the fact that we believe that education is the great equalizer. And so in that regard, U of M Dearborn has, begin, has become a great partner with New Detroit. Now, a highly visible example of New De U of M Dearborn's commitment is the Center for American, Arab American Studies. The center was established in recognition of the fact that metropolitan Detroit is home to the largest Arab population outside the Middle East. That happened under Dan's leadership. Just this year, UM Dearborn added a new doctorate in education degree focused on research. The students in the first cohort are representative of the diverse population of the region. Their research interest will address issues, current issues and concerns about education in an urban environment. A few years ago in New Detroit, we do a lot of research, educational research, and one of the things we discovered from uh, the responses is that most of the universities in the state of Michigan do not prepare students to teach in an urban environment. With that in mind and with the uh, relationship that we have at U of M Dearborn, that's one of the things that became a reality and we're very excited about that fact and it's, it's, it's a way for us to, consider, to continue to send individuals to U of M Dearborn. It's very, very important. In 2001, New Detroit began having community conversations on race with leaders in the region. And uh, at one of our meetings, we were talking about how we could get young people involved in these conversations. We wanted to know, did they feel any differently about race as uh, leaders did, as uh, those of us who were a little older. And for those of you who know Dan, Dan was at the meeting and Dan said, why don't we start it 
at U of M Dearborn, and we were excited about that. So in 2004, New Detroit and U of M Dearborn worked together to plan the first Conversations on Race, Voices of a New Generation, which was part of the opening celebration of U of M Dearborn's University Center. We had students from a number of area colleges and universities participating in group discussions about the feelings that younger people have about race and race relations issues. As a result of that, U of M Dearborn has incorporated a race relations component into its orientation program for incoming students. And they continue to this day to have forums where they bring in guest speakers and then the students break up and, and have a discussion about race relations. So I commend the university for dealing with that issue. Remember, relationships first, issue second. Earlier this year, New Detroit partnered with the university, the Charles Wright Museum of African American History, the Henry Ford, and the Michigan Department of Civil Rights as part of the National Lincoln Bicentennial Commission. Uh, we had uh, an event at the, at the Museum of African American History, and uh, Professor Hershock was going to talk in a minute, actually was a part of that event. These are examples of the kind of commitment that leads to institutional change. And New Detroit's all about taking these baby steps to change institutions and policies. From 2006 to 2008, the University of Michigan Dearborn has witnessed significant changes in its student population. African American freshman enrollment grew by 108%. Latino enrollment is up by 44%. Enrollment from the Detroit public schools has increased by 263%, while the total freshman enrollment in that same time grew by 20%. Let me say that nothing changed in terms of the standards here at the university. We are excited about the changes um, that, again, is happening here at U of M Dearborn. Now, these actions have permeated the culture here at U of M Dearborn's campus by providing a welcoming atmosphere for an increasingly multicultural student body. We applaud the university and Chancellor Little for addressing race relations head on. Thank you for your model of courageous leadership that continues to enrich the metropolitan Detroit community. And again, congratulations on this 50th anniversary celebration. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Martin Hershock. Dr. Hershock received his undergraduate degree from U of M Dearborn in 1985 and now is Associate Professor of History and Chair of the Social Sciences Department. His specialty, and I was reading this, I was really, is 19th century American political and social history as well as Michigan history. That's a lot. He's published numerous books and articles and is recognized as a gifted teacher who has a genius for bringing the past to life in his classroom. Dr. Hershock led the discussion on Lincoln's legacy I mentioned a few minutes ago. Please welcome Dr. Martin Hershock to bring his perspective as a faculty member and a former student here at U of M Dearborn. Let me begin by telling you what a great privilege it is to be able to speak to you this evening on behalf of the faculty and the alumni of the University of Michigan Dearborn. Um, I am truly honored to be able to do this. It's a great privilege. As I sat here this evening and as I stand before you now, I could not help but think how incredible all this would have seemed to my grandparents and my parents, very much working class Detroiters. Um, one, it would have seemed incredible to see me standing here in a tie. <laughs> but more because uh, here I am, standing in front of such a distinguished group on such an auspicious occasion. But then again, that kind of transformative story is, in a nutshell, what makes this particular university so special. That sort of tangible impact is what we are celebrating here this evening. For 50 years now, this institution has embraced and embodied a unique mission to bring the excellence of the University of Michigan directly to the people of southeastern Michigan, to educate and to serve this metropolitan community and its residents, and to affect positive change in the region through the efforts of the institution and through the efforts of our alumni and students. I need to adjust. I'm not as tall as everyone else. OK. Speaking for myself, I know firsthand that I would not be standing here today if it were not for the University of Michigan Dearborn. 
The university was established at a heady time in our region's history. Yes, I'm a history professor. You need to have a little history lesson here tonight. Detroit was in its prime in 1959. Nearly two million residents lived within the city's borders. The region's lifeblood, the auto industry, was humming. Detroit was cranking out cars at an unprecedented rate. The promise and the opportunity that had drawn tens of thousands of African Americans, Poles, Ukrainians, Arabs, Appalachian whites, and myriad others to this area and into those auto plants began to bear fruit for many, though certainly not for all. The, the fruit that was born took the form of home ownership for these workers, the creation of sprawling suburbs offering people opportunity to move out of the city, money to enable workers to enjoy the fruits of America's expanding consumer culture, and for the first time, additional income that allowed working class parents to envision a college education for their children and a life beyond the factory. We owe a debt of great gratitude to the Ford Motor Company for having the vision to establish the Dearborn campus of the University of Michigan, for bringing a world-class educational opportunity directly to those who had built this region and who had built its main industry and to the children of those individuals at this most vital of moments. The mission of serving the needs of this intellectually hungry, talented, yet raw population was one that the Dearborn campus readily embraced, and it continues to stand at the core of who we are today. Indeed, for me personally, and I'm sure for many of you here tonight as well, that is my story. No one in my family had ever attained anything higher than a high school diploma. In fact, my mom was one of 18 children. But everyone was aware of the significance of a University of Michigan education. Nonetheless, even for a kid like me who contemplated college, the prohibitive cost of attending Ann Arbor um, particularly the room and board, a lack of awareness of university culture, and a deep-seated insecurity and pervasive lack of confidence forged in the grimy surroundings of my southwest Detroit neighborhood made the attainment of such a goal beyond anything I could ever imagine. That is, until I had the tremendous good fortune of attending an informa informational meeting about the Dearborn campus at my high school. It turned out to be the most important meeting I think I've ever attended. In just a few short moments, the unattainable seemed suddenly and conveniently within my reach. And so I screwed up my courage and I applied. I can't tell you how very proud I was, much less how proud my family was, when they learned that I'd been admitted to the university. I quickly learned that admission was the easy part. <laughs> when I first set foot on campus, I found that the demands of university life were beyond anything I had anticipated. I was accustomed to earning good grades in high school with relatively little effort. True. But I suddenly found myself working three times as hard as ever just to maintain a C-plus average. After a bit of soul searching and in response to a long heart-to-heart -heart discussion with one of my professors who urged me to consider a change of majors, I was pre-business. Uh, the D-plus in accounting sort of suggested that maybe that wasn't for me. I came to recognize that I possessed the drive to succeed, but I lacked, perhaps, um, refinement. At the same time, I was comforted by the fact that my classmates shared many of these same traits, 
and by the fact that it was abundantly clear to me that my professors wanted nothing more than for me to succeed and that they were willing to go to great lengths to both challenge and to support me, to provide me with the necessary tools as well as the training to use those tools. I remember taking a class with this particularly notorious history professor, Peter Amon, who all the students avoided because he gave really hard grades, and I took his class, and he gave, I took this midterm with him and wasn't sure how he did, and he handed it back, and there scrawled in nearly illegible writing that all of us professors possess, where this was this beautiful comment. Um, you know, it was something to the effect that I do not toss bouquets lightly, but I must say that you have a real talent. I still have that paper, and, and <laughs> I pull it out from time to time, and uh, it's, you know, it really was a turning point. Um, the professors here believed in me, and they took the time to show it. The tireless labors of the faculty here reinforced something that my family and my city had long taught me, that diligence and hard work would yield an honest return. The UMD faculty also showed me how one individual could make a difference, and they instilled within me a determination to be one of those individuals. Without a doubt, this spirit has long been and continues to be the hallmark of this institution, of its faculty, of its fine staff, and of its students. What makes it all the more powerful is how that spirit is also manifest in our, our institutional commitment, and even more significantly, our alums' commitment to making a difference right here in southeastern Michigan, and to perpetuating and continuing this tremendous legacy of both personal and metropolitan impact. My University of Michigan Dearborn experience served me well, helping me to gain admission to one of the nation's top graduate programs, introducing me to my wife, and inspiring me to give everything I had in the classroom, particularly in the many classes that I taught at my alma mater while I was working on my dissertation. It was thus a very sad day indeed when after completing my PhD at the branch campus in Ann Arbor, <laughs> that I took a job at a small East Coast college, a world away from my home and from my institutional touchstone. You can readily imagine my euphoria when I learned two years after taking that job that the University of Michigan Dearborn was looking to hire an historian. I immediately applied for the job and I was thrilled beyond belief when I learned that I was being offered the position. Now my New York colleagues could not fathom why anyone would be happy to move back to Detroit. But I very much welcomed the chance to return home and to work at the university that had done so much for me. Perhaps I thought I might also be able to change a life in a similar manner to the way the University of Michigan Dearborn faculty had changed mine. And I'd like to think that in some small way I've been able to do that. I know that my faculty colleagues strive to do this each and every day. Now, metropolitan Detroit is, of course, a very different place today than it was in 1959. Detroit's population has collapsed. Our primary industry has fallen upon very trying times. Unemployment, poverty, and racial divisions tear at our social fabric. And the state's ability to support public education is being sorely tested. But in spite of these difficulties, and indeed in response to them, the University of Michigan Dearborn has reaffirmed its commitment to its original mission and proudly and willingly assumes the lead in our region's efforts to re-energize and redefine itself. I know I speak for the faculty when I say that we stand ready to educate and support our students, to serve this community, and to uphold the high standards of the university in this most difficult of times. 
As an alum of the institution, I want to express my sincerest gratitude to this university, to its faculty, and to its staff for believing in me and the many, many more just like me, and for providing all of us with the opportunity to show what we could do. I, along with the thousands of others who have passed through your doors, have been forever changed and intend to further the values that have been instilled by this great institution and to work diligently to continue to impact our homes and communities. Indeed, I would implore all of our alums to stay connected, to be involved in the life of their university. There are so many ways for you to do this. Volunteer your time to the university. Speak to current students. Share your expertise and experience. Work with an intern or a co-op student. Donate to scholarship funds. Write to the, your state legislature to tell them what an incredible place this is. In short, I invite you to help us to keep the legacy of the University of Michigan Dearborn's metropolitan impact moving forward. I want to thank you for your time this evening and for all that you do and have done to make the University of Michigan Dearborn such a special place. I know that the future promises even greater accomplishments for this wonderful institution. Happy birthday, UMD. It is now my great privilege to introduce our uh, next speaker, student from the College of Business, who I had the wonderful opportunity to get to know a bit before, um, before this evening's event. She's very, very impressive. Her name is Saba Khan, and she's going to offer a student's perspective on the um, University of Michigan Dearborn and the meaning of the 50th. Saba. Thank you, Dr. Hershock. Chancellor Little, Regent Richner, Regent Maynard, respected faculty, staff, alumni, and guests, and fellow students. I'm honored to be here to share this stage with such esteemed speakers. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be here at this joyous and historical event for our campus. My story on campus resonates with many stories of people who came before me, and along with those of students who attend today. For the past two years, UVM Dearborn has given me a chance to create a home away from home and to form friendships I will carry throughout my life. We all have our families that we are born into and that we live with but U of M Dearborn has given me a second home and a second family. A family I can eat with, pray with, have classes with, and study with. A family that when I get stressed can help me through any difficult situation, both school and non-school related. The second family brings a new set of viewpoints from many different ethnic backgrounds. It has also helped in my intellectual and social development. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of this campus community and perhaps wouldn't have had the same opportunity to have such an eclectic family elsewhere. Today, in this very audience, are the faculty that I look up to and my closest friends here on campus. The faculty from the College of Business that have helped shape me as a person and the friends that I hope to hold for a lifetime. Alongside with these friends, we've worked with many student organizations to build upon our past generations with organizations such as Amnesty International, AASO, Steps Towards Change, along with being Vice President of the Muslim Students Association, I've learned skills such as time management and public speaking. These organizations have helped structure our personalities, and I hope that in the future we can take what we've learned in our classes and our extracurricular work and make a greater impact on the community at a higher level. As students, we follow many traditions on campus. One of the most important being the idea of work. As most, more than half of us have, are working along with taking classes, we are constantly bringing back what we learn from the outside world back to our campus life and vice versa. This diffusion of information and coping with both at the same time allow us to enhance both atmospheres. Being located in Metro Detroit, our campus for the last 50 years has had a great opportunity 
to impact the, great, the corporations around us. For one, it's given us a chance to give back to our communities as we cherish the work, time, donations, internships, and co-op that our alumni have left for us. It has helped make U of M Dearborn a stronger campus. And as students, I hope that these are the skills that become the foundation that build upon for the next 50 years. I feel privileged to attend this event, this prestigious event, to mark our accomplishments and successes. I look forward to one day attending the sentential celebration in the future. Thank you and happy 50th anniversary, U of M Dearborn. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call back up Chancellor Little. Now that's what I mean about our smart, talented, and courageous students. Thank you so much, Saba, for those great, great words. You represent the future. Our students here represent the future of the region. Listening to you makes me all the more confident that we're going to go great places together here in Southeast Michigan. I would like now to uh, invite Wayne County Executive Robert Ficano to come forward because he has a, he has a pre presentation to make. Thank you uh, very, very much. I've sort of been Don, the one to uh, represent some of the elected officials here. I know we're with uh, Mayor O'Reilly that wishes he could be here, and I know all the other proclamations uh, that we have. Um, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure, and, and not only happy birthday, but really uh, congratulations on what you've been able to do over the past 50 years for the community. I can say this, I've, and I've traveled with that. We've been, I've been on five uh, trade missions to China a couple uh, to the Middle East and, and some to Europe. And I can tell you one of the biggest recruiting tools when we want to bring international investment into this area is that Block M uh, that is behind me. Uh, it is wor uh, recognized worldwide. Uh, we know that companies come here because of the research. And in fact, uh, one of the biggest scores that we got was uh, General Electric uh, with our Aerotropolis and what we want to develop outside of the airport. And, uh, General Electric specifically said to us they came, and one of the big attractions was the uh, University of Michigan Engineering School, uh, both on the, I guess, the, the side campus there in Ann Arbor. <laughs> no, uh, the, uh, obviously the main campus on Ann Arbor and uh, um, uh, University of Michigan here in uh, Dearborn. So uh, you're doing a lot of good work. You're doing a lot of things that help us in the region as we face these challenges. In recognition of all that you've been able to uh, uh, achieve uh, for 50 years, and we know there will be another 50 and 150 in the future. Uh, I have a proclamation from uh, uh, the 2.1 million people of Wayne County, and I know it represents really the whole region in southeastern Michigan, and congratulations and really uh, thanking you for all that you've done to contribute to the quality of life uh, here in the state of Michigan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Thank you, Mr. Fricano, and what a, what a powerful statement that is. 2.1 million people speaking in support of this campus, and I believe it. <laughs> there are also proclamations here which are um, uh, some anticipated and some not anticipated, and therefore all the more pleasing. But we have proclamations from Mayor O'Reilly, who does regret that he's not here, but there's a proclamation on behalf of the city of Dearborn. We have a proclamation from the state of Michigan, signed by several of our legislators and Governor Granholm, which is up here, and I invite you to come up and see the proclamations. And we have a proclamation and statement from Congressman Dingell, which was entered into the congressional record today. And I find it personally very, very warming to realize that our elected officials are so supportive of this campus. And we know that they're supportive because of the great steps that have been taken in capital outlay and new buildings and uh, strong efforts to support funding for higher education in spite of the very tough times that we face. So I invite you to come up after the ceremony and read these proclamations and, and see the really visceral connection there is between this campus and um, all of our elected officials and government officials. It is now time to wrap up our program and to get on with the dinner and dancing and fun. And yes, dancing, actually, I understand the twist will be performed by people <laughs> younger than myself. Younger people will be doing the twist. People properly dressed for the twist, actually. 
So I would uh, like to invite um, everyone to um, enjoy the evening and to have just a wonderful party of celebration. We have a video produced by our students, which I think we would now be able to see if everything goes right technically. Let's give it a try. Uh, one of my most memorable experiences is probably um, very common to a lot of people there is playing euchre in the old University Mall. I'm the class of 63, January 63, which was the second graduating class here at the university. Uh, there's a, it's a long time to remember back that far, but it was uh, uh, small, a uh, lot of competition between the, the students and particularly the, those at engineering school, and we had uh, we had a great time. My most memorable moment has to be um, being a part of the Michigan African American Student Network. Uh, we were able to come together and collaborate with other student organizations and bringing Governor Grant home to our university. I loved it here so much that both of my sons graduated from U of M Dearborn. We have a granddaughter who just graduated from the university last April. We don't have any great grandchildren yet, but when we do, I certainly hope they're among those who have a privilege of going here. And I just wanted to wish the, my favorite university ever a happy 50th. You've given me so much, and I hope that I can repay you in the future. Thank you, U of M Dearborn. Happy 50th birthday. Happy 50th, U of M Dearborn. Happy birthday, U of M Dearborn. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, congratulations, University of Michigan Dearborn. Happy 50th anniversary. Say happy 50th anniversary. Happy 50th anniversary. Go blue. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear U of M Dearborn. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Bravo. Well, that brings our ceremony to a close, and I think all of us feel the excitement and the happiness and, uh, and the, the recognition of this 50 years. So let's move forward and go blue.